Welcome to the CEO Insider Podcast, powered by Y Texas. My name is Sandy McElroy. In today's episode, we'll talk to the president of Valentine HR, Caroline Valentine. Caroline founded Valentine HR in 2004 and is based in Austin, Texas. They serve over 300 businesses throughout Texas, the United States, Great Britain, Australia, and Canada. Enjoy this episode of the CEO Insider Podcast, powered by Y Texas, with Caroline Valentine. Caroline, you are a true entrepreneur. Uh, you started your business from scratch. Um, one, how long did that decision take to say I'm going to go for this, and how long did it take before you said I got this? Uh, I think, uh, according to my parents, uh, my first entrepreneurial action was about the age of five. <laughs> so I would say that I did come into this uh, somewhat genetically, my DNA. Um, uh, and the concept of HR as a consulting um, uh, uh, business uh, was in the works for many years. It's been a need in, in our uh, it's been a need for quite a while. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we saw that as an opportunity. We saw the pain points for clients. We saw that there was uh, um, needs that weren't being fulfilled, and so we jumped into that. And you know, there's still days 15 years later. When, you know, I'm not sure if I got it. So <laughs> more, more days than not, we got it, right? More days than not, we know. And every time we grow with more clients and helping them grow their businesses and uh, maintain um, safe and compliant environments for their employees, we know that we got it. Mm-hmm. You know, as a business owner, as you grow your business, you, you reach different levels. We talk about it a lot in terms of crawl, walk, run. And at every stage of development of your company, there's a little bit of a, okay, now we're doing something new. We put the bikes bike into a new gear, and now we got a new way we need to do things. So every time you go through that transition, there's a little bit of, gosh, how am I doing? Mm-hmm. Okay, nope, okay, I'm good, I got it. So, you know, there's a little bit of that that always happens. And any entrepreneur who's listening to this podcast is going to say, oh, yeah, I've been there. I, I feel that. You know, I read something the other day, and I don't know if it actually falls into HR, but I would still like your thoughts on this and maybe give me your theory. Um, I read the other day that the number one reason that people leave a workplace is, and it's a very vague answer, but they say it just doesn't feel right. Yes, we've done exit interviews with employees of our clients, and we've heard that same response. And what it really means is that individual is having a difficult time articulating exactly what the problem is Mm -hmm. and whether or not it is internal to them or if it's external factors somewhere in the organization. Um, But typically when they say it doesn't feel right, they're not aligned with the vision or the mission of the organization. Or it could also mean, you know, my office mate eats pee and leaves the shells on the floor and it's driving me crazy. Like that is sometimes the answer. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And I think everyone has probably worked in an office where there's someone that just – that. Bugs you. What kind of advice would you give to a, uh, an entrepreneur or an established business owner that would be moving to do moving their business to Texas? Well, first thing I would say is welcome. Right. <laughs> the doors are open. We got plenty of room. Come on in. Excited to have you joining us here. Um, same thing I would say is data is your friend. Information is power. The more you can learn about Texas and Texas laws and the culture and understanding who your competitors are locally and more you can learn about um, uh, the best place to house your business, the, the, the best environment for your employees, what is the norms here around um, benefits and, and um, compensation, around paid time off, around employment laws that you need to know so that you don't get snagged with some fines later. The more you can get that advanced knowledge, the better. And so just like the early settlers of Texas, having a scout come Mm -hmm. out here to Austin, Texas, that you can meet with some of the natives, the locals, you know, and we can prepare you for what that's going to be when you get here so that it can be a more, you know, Exciting time and not fraught with any kind of issues. You don't want that. If I could add to that just a little bit, too, you mentioned sending a scout. Now, if you sent someone to Texas 
and you only sent them to, let's say, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and they came back and gave you a report on what Texas is like, they would have a much different report had they gone to Houston or had they gone to San Antonio or had they gone to uh, here in Austin. It's a very, uh, very different regionally. Each of our major cities has their own culture and their own personality. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they That's tr- true. truly do. So I think, first of all, b- before you send your scout here, you want to decide what is the right environment for you, you mm-hmm. know, on a statewide level. You know, where is it that's going to be the best for you? You know, um, we're pretty cooperative here in Texas. We, the big cities, we do, we do enjoy um, working together, but there's also competition. And that could be something um, positive for a business looking at coming to Texas is, you know, where in Texas is it best for us? Caroline, you mentioned earlier uh, getting to know the laws in the state of Texas when it comes uh-huh. to, to doing business. What are some of the laws that uh, people find unique to Texas? Well, one, uh, one of the things that I would say uh, is most uh, interesting to uh, business owners that are uh, moving their, their locations uh, here to Texas or looking at starting up a business here in Texas is um, the way that we manage workers' compensation insurance. There, you could choose to self-fund and register through the Department of Insurance, or you could choose to purchase workers' compensation insurance through a third-party carrier. And that seems like such a small aspect of running a business, but it's one of those dot the I's, cross the T kinds of tasks. It's got to get done, and it's got to get done properly, and you got to register properly, and you got to have all the right posters, and you blah blah blah. There's just a lot that has to happen. And that's just an example of, of one of the pieces of um, uniqueness that we have to Texas. Uh, across Texas, some of our, our, st- our cities have enacted specific laws and regulations that only exist for certain radiuses, you know, within certain counties or city areas. And so it's one of those things where it's just a moving target a lot. You know, mm-hmm. I don't do my taxes and haven't for years. I wouldn't want to keep up with the IRS tax law. And we would recommend that business owners not think they want to keep up with any of the employment laws. It's just a lot to deal with. So um, getting some experts to help you with that is probably the best thing to do so you can sleep at night. Caroline. Knowing you're not in violation of anything. Yeah, You know, Caroline, every, I, I, every person that I talk to, uh, the, the, the fight for talent is, is, is real. It's very, very real. What kind of advice do you have for business leaders uh-huh. uh, on succeeding in the war on talent? The war for talent, I should say. It's no different than the fight for customers, mm-hmm. the war to gain more market share. It's pretty much the same. So when you look at the war on talent or for talent, right? We don't want a war on talent, the war, war for talent. I still think that the lessons of the art of war, you use those to grow your business. You can use those to grow and retain your employees. It's all about having the data that you need to understand competitively what should I be paying people, what sort of benefits should I be offering, uh, you know, where are the people that I'm interested in hiring, how do I find them, how do I let them know about us. Just no different than how, how do you go about acquiring customers use those same sort of strategies to go about uh, acquiring employees. Carolyn, I have a nine-year-old daughter, and you're a very successful businesswoman and entrepreneur. And I was wondering, you know, from your perspective, if when my daughter was came to you at 20 years old or just graduated college, let's mm-hmm. say she just graduated from Harvard, just to throw one out there, mm-hmm. shoot for the stars. What kind of advice? Uh-huh. Yeah. What what kind of advice? Good for her. Yeah, Good for her. She keeps saying she wants to go to Harvard. I said you better study really, really hard. Then, um, what's your what? What kind of advice would you give her as she was going into the workforce? Well, first of all, I would say know thyself as much as you can know when you're 20. I mean, I'm not all than I was back then, um, but. Getting an understanding about knowing yourself and knowing what you love to do. Mm-hmm. And being advancing in a career in which you already have a passion for it and you love doing it, it's going to meet the obstacles that you encounter along the way much easier to overcome because you have such a passion for it. And knowing that about yourself and knowing how you can apply your strengths and your talents 
to the right environment. Mm -hmm. Secondly, have a sense of abundance about it and not scarcity. If you're in an environment where it's not working for you, but there is some kind of a fear about do I want to maybe start my own business? Do I want to maybe, you know, take another job? What do I want to do? Look at it like it's an, a risk, but it's, 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 a, it's a positive risk for you, that there's going to be more opportunity out there than there are non-opportunities. It, the world's pretty wide open. There, the opportunity to start a business, grow a business, join a growing business is out there, and that's not changing anytime soon. Right. You can't take your foot off of first and get to second without taking some small risks. But it's worth it. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't get a home run. So understanding that, hey, you know, risk is going to be okay, and I don't need to be afraid to go and try something. Mm -hmm. um, every entrepreneur will say the same thing. There's seven failures behind a really successful um, venture. Um, that's the average, by the way, for entrepreneurs. So being comfortable with risk and being confident in yourself to say, I'm, I can find a way to make this work. But you've got to do it for the love of what you do. Uh, and not just, you know, I want to become a millionaire. It's got to be, <laughs> I want to become a millionaire doing this great thing I'm going to do, whatever that is. We appreciate your time uh, carving out some time for us to visit with us here on the CEO Insider. Thank you. All right, Caroline. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.